Constructive rest, or semi-supine, is a really useful Alexander Technique procedure to help quieten down our minds and bodies. It helps to develop body awareness and the ability to notice and break habits that are affecting our posture, movements and well-being. In this Alexander Technique Constructive Rest talk through, I'll guide you through a more advanced approach where we'll include some simple movements. If you are new to Constructive Rest or Semi-Supine or Alexander Technique in general, I'd advise you to first watch my more simple guided Constructive Rest video, which I'll link to above now, as I won't be explaining all the basics again in this video. I'll make an MP3 version of this talk through available on my website. If you'd like that, then click the link in the description. I'm Pete Robinson from movementandposture.com. I teach Alexander Technique online and in the real world, and I release a new video each Sunday, usually based on questions I've had from people on my courses or from YouTube comments. If you're interested in the Alexander Technique or generally improving your posture, movements and performance, then click subscribe and ding the notification bell. Get yourself into semi-supine position. Feet flat on the floor, head resting on a couple of books. Leave a bit of space around you as we will be moving the arms and legs. Come to a complete stop. Make a decision to spend the next few minutes completely focused on this activity. Leave all thoughts about the rest of your life aside. Your job, your health, your schedule, your relationships. Don't engage with any thoughts that arise. Notice the support under your body. Your head is resting on the books. Your shoulders are resting on the floor. As is the back of your pelvis, your elbows and the soles of your feet. Try to bring all of those points of contact into your awareness at the same time and make the decision to allow your weight to release into them and for the floor to take over responsibility for your weight. This means that your muscles are no longer responsible for holding you up. Keep your eyes awake and notice how far away the ceiling is. Be aware of the distance between the floor beneath you and the ceiling above you. Also, without moving your eyes, notice how much of the room you can see. We're deciding to notice the whole range of our vision rather than fixing the eyes. Waking up the peripheral vision in this way will help your neck muscles to release even more. Bring attention to your breath, entering and leaving the body at the nose. At the same time, notice your body rising and falling under your hands. The breathing is happening automatically and you're just being aware of it. Don't try to change it or judge it. Bring your attention to your knees. Think of allowing more and more space in the knee joint. The weight of your leg is releasing down from the knee to your hip joints and ankles and disappearing into the floor. You're pointing your knees at the ceiling, but letting your legs rest and release any excess tension. Bring your attention to your shoulders. Again, think of allowing more and more space in the shoulder joints. The weight of the arm is releasing through the shoulder joints and into the floor. And also through the elbow joint and into the floor. Your wrists are resting on your body and the weight of your hands is releasing through the body and into the floor. Again, bring your attention to all the points of contact with the floor. Notice the support and without doing anything, decide to allow your weight to release, leaving your body with more space and expansion. Bring your attention to your face. Keeping your eyes alert, allow your facial muscles to soften. 
If you can allow yourself to smile, that will really help. Notice any tension in your mouth, your lips or your tongue, and decide just to let it go. Allowing your whole face to soften, find more space and expansion. If you feel as though you've quietened down, but your senses are alert and paying attention to your whole self, and that you are completely resting, allowing the ground to fully support you, then we'll move on to making some movements. If you find that you can't quieten your mind and body, then maybe don't try the movements just yet, but enjoy resting for a little while longer, and then try this again another time. The first movement that we'll make is with the head. In a moment, I'll ask you to let your eyes track to one side and then lead the head into a slight roll in that direction. Notice if what I just said has changed anything. Have you started to get ready? Have you lost any awareness of your whole self? You know what you're about to do, but make sure that you stop and carry on quietly noticing yourself and the room around you and allowing the ground to fully support you. Okay, now let the eyes slowly track to the right and then allow your head to slowly follow the gaze so that it rolls over onto the books. Keep allowing all of the weight to release into the books regardless of the position of the head. Decide to let your neck be free and keep your face soft and your eyes lively. Now we're going to return to the centre. Again with the eyes leading, allow the head to gently roll back until you're looking straight up again. Once more, make sure that you're still aware of yourself and the room and you're allowing the books to support you. Now we will move to the left. Let the eyes track to the left while you leave your neck, arms and breathing free. Allow the head to roll gently to the left. Notice the point of contact with the floor changing and release your weight through whichever part of the head is resting on the floor. Once again, let the eyes track to the right and bring the head back to the centre. We're choosing to make a movement whilst practising remaining fully aware of ourselves and keeping priorities about our balance and tension. It's a simple movement, but the same process can be used for any movement. It's all about breaking any habits of using too much effort, unnecessary tension or of losing our balance. The next movement we'll make will be to raise the hands up from our body. If you find this one too challenging, then keep your elbows resting on the floor. So again, you know what you're about to do. Check that you are still in your balanced resting state and that your awareness is taking in everything, that you're not getting ready. Keeping your hands soft, let your fingers peel away from your body and the hands slowly move upwards and outwards until it's over the elbow. Renew your decision to release your neck and shoulders and let the ground support you. Slowly let the fingers lead your arms upwards. Keep your abdominal muscles released and breathing freely. Don't stiffen the legs or the face. Keep the fingers moving slowly upwards. Think of your arms connecting into the back and the shoulder joint is just there to allow the arms to move but not gripping them. Now slowly let your elbows sink back down to the ground 
while you keep sending your fingertips up to the ceiling. Once the elbows are resting again, let the hands slowly come back to the body and rest. Check that any tension or effort you've used in this movement has been fully released again, and that you've returned to your balanced resting state. The final movement that we'll make will be with your legs. Starting with the left leg, think of the knee releasing up and away from the pelvis without tensing the abdominal muscles or anywhere else in the body. Allow the knee to slowly release a little upwards until the knee is no longer in contact with the ground. Give yourself a moment to allow your balance to adjust to only having one foot on the ground. Check that there are no habits of tensing or losing awareness that have snuck in. Now slowly let the foot release back to the ground, keeping freedom in the hip, knee and ankle. Again, notice your balance adjusting as the weight releases through both feet again. Finally, think of the right knee releasing away from the hip. And without tensing up in the body, neck or head, keeping aware of your whole self, let the right knee release upwards until the foot is off the floor. Again, let your balance settle. Scan yourself to check that nothing is tensing up. Keeping the left leg released, and without holding your breath, let the right foot slowly come back to the ground while you release your knee up to the ceiling. Come back to your balanced resting state. Renew your decision to keep awareness of the whole body, to not unnecessarily tense up or fix any part of yourself, to allow your breathing to be free, and your weight releasing into the floor. I hope you found that useful. Hit the like button if you did, as it helps me decide what type of videos to make in the future. I found that making these types of simple movements in semi-supine really helped me to work out how to move with less tension, and I hope it works for you too. If you have any comments or suggestions, then drop me a line below. It's always good to hear from people who are interested in the Alexander Technique, and I'll always try to give a helpful answer if I can. See you again soon. Bye for now.